Hey guys, it's Emily, and welcome to the second sports med and performance talk through FC Frederick's at home series. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a very important topic on performance, overall wellness, injury prevention, and recovery, um, with this topic being nutrition. So, I picked this as the second topic in this mini series just because I thought it was really suiting for where we're at in our lives right now. Um, you know, we're all at home and it's just super easy to come to eating a bunch of junk all day. And so, I really wanted to give this information out to you guys and um, just get you guys thinking a little bit different about nutrition and how it could be positively or negatively affecting your performance going forward. So um, most of this information from today, just kind of as an FYI, is coming from the International Society of Sports Nutrition. Um, I'm currently in process of obtaining my CISSN, so my Certified um, Sports Nutritionist and uh, Specialist Certification. Um, so if you guys want more information on that or want to be able to read any of these articles that I'm kind of pulling information from, um, just let me know. I can certainly send those over to you guys. So um, as I mentioned before, we're going to be talking about all about nutrition. So today we're going to focus on a huge topic in nutrition, which is macronutrients. Um, so we're going to briefly talk about what they are, um, how much you guys need to take in each day, and why they're important for your sports performance. So um, the first macronutrient that we're going to talk about, probably just talk about, talking about this one in this um, lecture, is going to be carbohydrates. So when I think about you guys being soccer athletes, you guys and girls are primarily training in the oxidative or fast glycolysis energy systems, meaning that you guys are requiring your muscles to be able to perform for longer periods of time without long periods of rest to allow your muscles to recuperate. So um, in this mainly aerobic and also partially anaerobic um, sport, you guys, your bodies really rely on the burning of carbs and fat as its preferred source of energy. Let's go ahead and just dive right into what carbs are. So carbs, as I mentioned before, are classified into this category of macronutrients. And then um, within this category of carbohydrates, you can break them down into simple and complex carbohydrates. So simple car car carbohydrates can also be broken down into two categories, which are monosaccharides and disaccharides. So your monosaccharides are things like glucose, fructose, and galactose, um, with glucose being the most important of those monosaccharides. So um, glucose is the sole source of fuel for your brain. So I want you guys to think about that statement for a second. It is the sole source of energy for your brain. So if you guys deprive, deprive your body of glucose um, through one of those crazy non-carb diets, or if you're just simply not taking in enough carbs each day, you guys are denying your brain of its primary fuel source. So um, this is going to cause a disruption in your nor normal cognitive processes, meaning that if you guys deprive yourself of glucose um, through this carb or low carb diets, you guys are going to have an alteration in your self-control, your decision making, and your critical thinking skills. So now take that information and kind of apply it to the game of soccer. Without your mind being sharp, you guys will not perform to the best of your ability. So just think about how important that is um, going forward. And then additionally, I just want you guys to store this into your mind. Um, so glucose is stored in the liver and the muscles as glycogen. So just remember that fact because we're going to talk a little bit about it later. Um, so just quickly to talk about the other two types of monosaccharides, fructose and galactose. So your fructose comes from things like really sweet fruits, so like kiwi and bananas, berries, those kind of things pineapple, um, and etc. So uh, things that you want to avoid with fructose are really processed carbs, like your high fructose corn syrup and those type of products because they really just have no nutritional value whatsoever. Um, and then finally to wrap up monosaccharides, just uh, note that galactose is both a monosaccharide and a disaccharide, so it's going to kind of transition into that talk a little bit. Um, so we see galactose mainly in our dairy products. Um, as a combination of uh, multiple simple sugars. So um, just like there are three monosaccharides, there are also three disaccharides. Um, again, we already talked about galactose, and then in addition to that, there is sucrose and maltose. So um, since we talk about, talked about galactose already, um, let's talk about sucrose next. So sucrose is like your table sugar, your honey, your brown sugar, or your turbinado, which is like uh, advertised as sugar in the raw, and you guys can see that sometimes when you go out for coffee or whatever. Um, but 
So I know what you guys are thinking when you're talking about table sugar, you're like, well, it's bad for you. We should probably just avoid it at all costs. Um, well, I just want you guys to remember that, uh, this is a simple carbohydrate and it's a simple sugar, right? So, um, believe it or not, there's actually a time and place for these simple carbs. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this later when we're talking about, um, pre participation preparation, big tongue twister there. <laughs> Um, so I'm not really going to spend a lot of time talking about the last, uh, disaccharide in being maltose because that's a type of sugar that's found in beer and you guys are obviously too young to talk about that and how negatively alcohol will impact your performance. So I'll save that one for your college ET as you guys go forward in your playing careers. Well, um, now that we have kind of talked about all of the simple carbs and simple sugars, let's go ahead and talk about complex carbohydrates. Um, so complex carbs, like your simple carbs, are also broken down into two categories, and these categories are your oligosaccharides and your polysaccharides. So oligosaccharides are essentially just a few simple sugars that are linked together, and they don't really serve a huge nutritional purpose, especially when we're talking about preparing for competition, so I'm not going to really spend any time talking about them. Polysaccharides, on the other hand, are hundreds of simple sugars that are um, linked together, and they are things like your starches, your fiber, and glycogen. And remember, I told you guys to remember the word glycogen, so go ahead and get that ball rolling again. Um, so starches are a form of plant-based polysaccharide, and they're just a good source of energy and also micronutrients such as like iron, vitamin B, and calcium. Um, so your starchy foods kind of come from things like your corn, your grains, cereal, beans, potatoes, and all of that kind of stuff. So um, fiber, on the other hand, is also a plant-based polysaccharide, um, and it's just really important for your gastrointestinal health, or your GI, or your, your stomach, and your intestines, and all of that good stuff, and just keeping um, strong and normal uh, GI movements and stuff like that going. Um, if that's the best way to say it. <laughs> so uh, the Institute of Medicine recommends that children and adults receive about 14 grams of fiber um, per the foods that we ingest every day. So if you guys are on or around that 2,000 calorie diet, that means we would ingest about 28 grams of um, fiber per day through the foods that we ingest. So if you guys aren't one who really enjoys those dark green leafy vegetables, um, and uh, those type of veggies, then um, some tips for increasing your fiber would be just go ahead and go with a whole fruit instead of juice. Um, start your day with a piece of fruit. Uh, read the label for fiber-filled grains. Eat more beans. Snack on popcorn. Um, don't peel your fruits, vegetables, and potatoes. And then just eat a salad or some vegetable soup or something before you are to ingest a meal or something like that if you guys are going to have an appetizer. <clears throat> so... Um, the last one that I wanted to touch on, and remember this is the very important one, is glycogen. So glycogen is formed by hundreds of thousands of glucose molecules linked together in long chains. And it's not really something that's found in its full form um, that we can just ingest and just have it re readily available in our diet. So um, glucose is... Uh, then broken down from the complex carbs that we eat and stored as glycogen in the liver and the muscles. Um, so when our body then needs this glucose in its um, simple form to then um, supply energy for our muscles, it's broken down in the liver or the muscles, wherever the source is, and um, it travels through the bloodstream to that muscle that is active and needing energy. So um, these processes are called uh, glycogenesis and glycolysis. Um, yep, and so uh, as mentioned before, this glycogen has to be stored somewhere. Um, so the body stores it in the liver and the muscles, uh, with the majority of that being within your muscles. So just think about everybody's kind of built differently. Everybody has different muscle mass. So sometimes more people or some people can store more glycogen than others just based off of muscle mass alone. Um, just an important thought on that is you can actually totally fill up your glycogen storage. So, um, this is what we want, right? We want to totally, uh, fill it up so that we have the most amount of glucose that is able to be broken down for our performance, right? So we have plenty of energy to supply our muscles for performance. Um, when it is, to, when it, when those stores are, um, filled up to its maximum capacity, they are then stored as fats. But, before you guys jump on the thing and be like, well, 
fats. We don't want to restore anything else as fats. Remember that um, those type of energy systems that you guys are utilizing a lot need fat and carbohydrates to um, have, have enough energy to perform. So I'm sure you guys are wondering why I just spent the last 10 minutes or so explaining the intricacies of carbohydrates to you. So I'm going to try to attempt to make that all make sense for you guys in the next few minutes. Um, so remember when we talked about simple carbs. So those simple carbs and sugars are typically just more available more quickly after you eat them um, to be used as energy. So the uh, time that it takes for carbs to be broken down and be available to be used as energy is rated on this glycemic index scale. So the simple sugars are high on this scale because they pretty much just enter the bloodstream right away and are able to be used as energy. So on the contrary, when you guys think about complex carbs, um, they take longer to be broken down and used for energy, so they are lot low on this glycemic index scale. Okay, so based off what we learned before, these low glycemic foods or carbs are typically higher in nutritional value and are a great food for actually increasing those glycogen st stores that we talked about earlier um, and preparing our body to be able to use that glycogen and then break it down when we need to um, for energy purposes in the upcoming days of competition. So um, this means that we want to eat and load our meals with good choices of complex carbs in the day before competition, okay? Um, so technically in the research, um, it shows in order to do this that you guys should be consuming at least 45 to about 65% of your daily diet in these rich nutrients that are found in carbs. Okay, um, so if you guys really want to be picky about the numbers and you want to do all the math and stuff like that, you could um, calculate it because you guys should be eating around 8 to 12 grams per kilogram, so you have to do a little conversion there, of body weight per day in order to properly maximize these glycogen stores in our body. So with that being said, just remember that these carbs um, and items that you should be choosing are of good quality and that you guys shouldn't be consuming more carbs than you needed. Um, because this will result in weight gain, which is fine if that is your goal. Um, but just remember, when in doubt, go for those whole grains, those veggies, and the whole fruits instead of the processed and fried foods, okay? Okay, guys, so I'm um, just going to wrap this up for you with a few examples of complex carbs that are really good sources of nutrients um, for maximizing those glycogen stores in the days building up to a gain. So examples of these are any type of dark green leafy vegetables, and remember that those have a lot of fiber in them too, which is also added plus, uh, bonus there. Um, any type of beans, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, whole grain pasta, brown rice, quinoa, multigrain bread, um, oatmeal, chickpeas, and anything like that, guys. There's a ton of options out there. Do your own research, um, look online, and see what kind of uh, carbohydrate like load is in each type of food so that you guys can kind of start putting together how much is um, that equating to how much you need during the day okay um, and then just to kind of further wrap up the whole lecture um, remember we talked about simple and complex carbs simple carbs are high glycemic remember that they um, allow for energy to enter the system and be ready for use like immediately and your complex carbs are really good at building energy stores and the day is going up to the game. So just think about um, the differences between that and how you're going to better prepare your body going forward with all of this information. So um, next, next lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about the other two types of macronutrients being proteins and fats. And then um, I think I'm going to do a third lecture on exactly what you guys should be doing, incorporating all of the knowledge from the first two lectures. Um, building up to a game, right before a game, during the game, and then how to strategically refuel after the game. Okay, so just if you guys have any questions, just absolutely reach out. Um, yeah, because I always forget, don't forget to be smart, be strong, be healthy, and be safe, and peace out.